In the context of escalating water shortages around the globe, the, the literal meaning of this quotation resonates stronger and has become a stark reality. Now, let's look at what Uncle Google has to say to us about that. So here we will use the Andrew Huber, that is, uh, just to explore when and how many times were the words related to water shortage or any other buzzwords that appear these days in media appear in digitalized text around, uh, during the thematic. So here we can see that uh, words like water scarcity, water stress, water deficit, water crisis, water shortage, water insecurity, water depletion, all of them appeared primarily after 1900, that is two centuries after the Benjamin Franklin's words, and one century before ours. That makes Benjamin Franklin a uh, time traveler of that time. Now, let's look at the graph provided by the World Resources Institute to analyze, to look at the water stress index. So from here we can see that most of the rich countries that suffer from world stress, I mean water stress, are located primarily in the Mana region, in Southern Africa and wider Central Asia. That is where we are. <clears throat> so, after dipping a dive, or, I mean, after dipping into the globality of this matter, let me start with a fascinating paradox, the one that many countries face, but unfortunately don't really recognize. That might sound, uh, th this brings us to a concept called virtual war. That might sound like science fiction, but that is real. So, uh, this term was coined by the Anthony, uh, John Anthony Allen in 1990s, in his book, and later it was expanded uh, by the uh, Dutch professor Arjen Paul Kester in 2010 in his uh, framework of uh, water footprint. So what is virtual water? Virtual water is the amount of water that is used during the entire life cycle of any product. That could be a single cotton t-shirt that you wear, or bananas exported from the tropical countries, or even a tip in the ring you wear on your finger. All of them involve water in, a, in some stages of their life, life cycle. So, let's, let me help you visualize what I, my message. So here we have a life cycle of a single cotton t-shirt. It starts with the harvesting of cotton, which involves, of course, cultivation of cotton. And the cultivation process uh, lasts from the spring to autumn, which involves also heavy, I mean, massive irrigation. And then there are other ways, other stages, spinning, weaving, using of diet, washing, labeling, transport, transportation. All of these stages, at some point, really require water. And uh, in total, virtual water content of a single cotton t-shirt equals to 2,700 liters of water. That is equal to, a, to filling a standard size swimming pool with the dimensions of 5 meters in length three meters in, la uh, in, in width, and two meters in depth. Can you see that? It's shocking, right? Isn't it? Now, before, uh, let me share the picture that I have in my mind. Let's look at the table of the most water-intensive products. In the list, is a, the first one is, of course, one kg of almonds that requires approximately 16,000 liters of water. Just an almond that we eat early in the morning. And of course, at the last, we have also one, paper, one piece of paper, that is an A4 format, which requires approximately five liters. So, the picture is really, uh, the picture is really shocking, isn't it? That is. Now, uh, let's narrow down our scale a bit. Imagine a downstream country. Imagine a double landlocked country, surrounded by vast deserts. We're at 80 percent, not one eight, but eight zero. Eighty percent of its water comes from neighboring countries. Can you guess which country is that? Uzbekistan, for sure. Uh, with the with its rivers fed by mountains from Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan <coughs> is heavily reliable on water shortage. Is really valuable. Uh, Uzbekistan is really vulnerable to water shortages, especially in a world where climate change makes it even more unpredictable. 
Now let's look at the World Resources Institute again. The World uh, Resources Institute, World Stress Index. Uzbekistan is placed 25th out of 164 countries with an index approaching to extremely high, that is 5. But in average is 3.63. But look at the three regions that we have. Navoi region, Samarkand region, and Jizan. If you can see, their, their indicator, the indicator of these regions, is approaching to, in the, in, to the index of 5. It's shocking. Now, let me share with you the list of... Here comes up a question. What are non-water intensive products? Well, all of them involve water, but there, are, there is a list that requires the least amount. There are many, by the way. The, per, the first one is, of course, grapes. Then we also have onions, carrots, tomatoes, watermelons, potatoes, pumpkins, and, of course, pharmaceuticals together with the processed food. Where raw materials could be exported from other countries, processed locally, and then sold abroad for, with, a high, with a higher value, for, as a high added value product. So, as a high value added product. Uh, when I'm talking about as a high value added product, so let me explain you the picture that I have in my mind. Here we have the, an economic efficiency of raw and processed food tomatoes. So tomatoes, tomatoes itself uh, require 200 liters of water just to produce one kg of tomatoes, which is sold for 10,000 sous on an international level. But just turn the tomato into canned tomato or tomato sous, it can generate up to 600,000 sous on an international market. Did you get the message? I really hope. <coughs> So, the same applies to other uh, products here, tomatoes, carrots, pickled onions, and potato crisps. All of them could be done better, for better, with the better efficiency. So now, the funny fact about Uzbekistan, by the way. Did you know that Uzbekistan ranks six globally, around the world, that means, in beef consumption? That is 31.6 kg per person annually. In my research, I suggested to import beef products from other countries, countries which are more abundant in water, which are rich in water. And the production of meat products is less water intensive. And the funny part, question, another question for you, to you all, by the way. Do, do you know what was the greatest share in Uzbekistan's export structure in 2023? Can you guess, based on the, of course, table? Can you guess? Gold. 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 Uzbekistan exported... Uzbekistan exported 25 metric tons of gold in 2023. According to my research, that, it, that equals to 8.5 trillion liters of water. 8.5 trillion liters of water. That is equal to 4 charbak plates. It's like exporting together with, in the form of gold. Four Charvak reservoirs. The, the reserv you got it here. You heard it right. Again. The reservoir where we really like to swim during the summertime. Four times over. So uh, this is real. Virtual water is not virtual. It is real. We need to think bigger. By calculating our water foot, by calculating water footprint, countries can strategi strategically shift into water-wise economies. And uh, just imagine uh, if we could produce, oh, if we could import the rice and beef from other countries rather than producing them ourselves in our country. That is much better picture. Well, overall, the, ma the message that I wanted to keep that here. Let's return to Benjamin Franklin's words. When the well is dry, we know the worth of water. My hope is that we don't wait until our wells run dry. By rethinking how we use water today, we can build a future where countries thrive, not just survive. Thank you. <laughs>